um, I'm Rochelle Harrington and I play Natalie Gray in Geek Girl. So the first thing we were going to ask was, what did you know about Geek Girl before you auditioned? Oh, so I, when I was about 10 years old, I read these books religiously. They were the only books that I would ever read. Um, and I just, I had such a connection um, with Harriet, weirdly enough. I mean, I didn't know um, about the neurodivergent side. I was, you know, I guess that's one of the privileges I have with being a divergent human being. Um, but I, I just, I loved the books so much. I loved how glamorous they were and also how down to earth they were and, you know, I just, I just loved them and I loved how clever she was. Um, so yeah, I read, um, I don't think I read all of the books. I definitely, my favorite one was, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one where she goes to Tokyo. That's my favorite one. That's the one that I read constantly all the time. I think it's the second book um, in the series. And yeah, I would, I would read uh, the first three just constantly. Um, and yeah, they were just my favorite. They were my favorite in school. So I was pretty well versed on them when the audition came around. All right. That's so cool. So were you like a big reader growing up? Mm, I would say that I was. I mean, I did the whole like book week thing in the UK. You know, we, you know, they had, um, I don't know if, you know, it's like that in, in America or wherever you are, but um, in England, you would, there was a library and you would basically go in and read as many books as you can for like stickers and stuff and you'd get prizes. And I used to do that all the time. But again, the only books that I would touch were Geek Girl. Uh-huh. Okay. That's so cool. I never, I don't think, well, maybe we did have something kind of like that where we would like see who could read the most books and whoever like read the most would win but that's so cool <laughs> I like <love> book week <laughs> yeah. cool. it's a very British thing to do <laughs> fair enough fair enough I would not know I've never been over there but it seems so lovely so <laughs> okay so since geek girl is like all about fashion how would you describe it if it was coming down a runway like what would it be wearing oh oh my gosh that is such a good question oh to me, I think it would be, okay, it would be wearing yellow. It would be yellow. Um, it would be this like massive poofy kind of ball gown, I think. Um, and it would have embellishments of like dinosaurs and polar bears. And um, it would be wearing Crocs. It would be wearing Crocs. And the hair would be really, really big, just really big hair, like maybe like a million buns in it just something really really crazy but something that just looks so good yeah absolutely that's so funny I think the ball gown is spot on too and the yellow all of that is really <laughs> I love it I'm a sucker for crocs too I will say <laughs> I never used to be a croc person and then on the set of geek girl they gave us crocs to wear because we were in heels virtually all the time and because I'm quite a, a small person they kind of had me elevated in heels or platform trainers so my heels would hurt quite often so I would be wearing these crocs and they were like heaven on my feet um so yeah I'm a croc person now fully converted that's so funny it's amazing what heels will do to turn a girl into a croc girl <laughs> Absolutely. They're with every outfit now. So good. Exactly. Like you can't go wrong. <laughs> I love. Okay. So what is your favorite thing about your character, Natalie? Oh, okay. I love how in the face of adversity, she is brave and she is persevered. She, that made zero sense. She perseveres, basically. She's a very resilient character. You can see how strong she is. Um, but I also love that there's a soft quality to her, like underneath all of her bravado and maybe maybe her ego a little bit. There's this like soft little girl, this like bundle of joy, I think. Um, and I think I relate to her in that sense, in terms of we're quite, I don't, I don't know if strong is the word, but you know, strong. And then underneath it is just a big old teddy bear. Yeah. I was going to ask if you thought that you and her have like much in common, but I guess that kind of answers my question. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have a little bit in common. I don't think I'm as sarcastic or as like quit witted as her. Um, but I definitely think that in our, um, in the way that we view life, definitely for sure. I think we're both pretty hardworking people. Um, and I think, you know, she's not afraid to go after her dreams, you know, regardless of, of anything that's being thrown her way. And I think I really relate to her in some sense um, of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I love it. That's so sweet. And it's always nice to like have a little bit of something that like you can attach yourself to in a character, I guess. So <laughs> what's your favorite like movie snack? It's got to be chocolate of some kind, but like not a bar of chocolate, chocolate in a bag that you can just reach in, pick one out and eat it. And then, but then they do run out really fast. So I don't know. I need like multiple bags of chocolate. I think yeah. maybe M&Ms or Smarties, but that has to be with a glass of water also because chocolate kind of, you need water with chocolate, I think. I 100% agree. I feel like I, but I'm also a chocolate girl, so I might be um, able to handle it on myself, on my own, but I feel like you have to pair it with some water because it's going to just like, I don't know if it dries you out or something, but it's just kind of hard to eat a whole bunch of it by itself. I was going to say, maybe it's, I was going to say it dries you out, but I'm thinking maybe it's like just rich, like because yeah. chocolate is so rich that you just need something to cleanse the palate. Yeah. I don't know. I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. I love it. And I'm also on the same, I'm on the same page because I'm just, I would probably pick chocolate in every single movie scenario. So yeah. that'll be done. That or Pringles. I do love Pringles because they're kind of, I guess they're easy to eat. Um, I love salt and vinegar Pringles as well. But again, that needs to be done with water because that dries your throat. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I 100% agree. Those are my two, my two go-tos. So I'm going to the movies with you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I already, I had an interview um, literally about an hour ago and I agreed with her to go with her to go see Monkey Man in the theater. So, I mean, if you want to join, feel free. Oh Absolutely. And uh, we'll bring the snacks. I think that'll be perfect. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. What was the most challenging part of this project for you and how did you overcome it? Oh, okay. So the most challenging part for me would have to have been never being on any kind of set before. Um, I, you know, have never been in front of the camera. Um, I just didn't really know any of the terminology. I kind of dived straight into the deep end, pretty blindsided by the whole thing. Um, and it was, don't get me wrong. It was like very, very scary. Um, and I that I didn't know what I was doing and obviously there were loads of people I mean on the first day I was told it was going to be a small set and for me that meant like maybe two or three people but when I got on there there was a good 50 odd people and I was little 19 year old me was very very scared and I was like I don't know what to do there's all these people around me um, I think I overcame it by being around the cast I think the cast are so incredible. They've, you know, they're all very professional and they know what they're doing. And they they took me in, they were very, very kind. And I was like a sponge around them. I feel like, you know, after those, you know, three, four months were kind of over, um, I'd learned so much. I felt like I was a completely new person, you know, all the things that they've been teaching me, they've really stuck in my head. And I, you know, I just know that the next job that I'm hopefully lucky enough to to be able to work on, I, I will know a whole lot more um, and I will be a, very well versed in everything film and tv because of them um and I learned everything because of them yeah no that's so sweet I love it I think that's a great answer um did you guys do a lot together like as a cast was it like a really good environment where you were like this is so fun it's like hanging out with my best friends <laughs> It was it was so very very fun I mean um at the time I was going through I was working through some grief uh, I had a good friend of mine pass away so it was it was a little bit of a confusing time for me um all in all but as I said the cast were very supportive we did so many things together um one that sticks out to me is we went to karaoke together it was the most fun I'd had in a long time because I've never done karaoke of any kind um and we were all just singing these songs there were so many videos of us just having so so much fun uh we went for pasta like we just go out for meals we went out for picnics um it was just really lovely um and then when we were in the green room on set you know we'd all make tiktoks and you know film things and it was just lovely and the chats that we would have we were all very tight-knitted as a group it was lovely yeah oh that's so sweet that's so fun it's always nice to just have that um anywhere you are so I feel like that's really that's really special what are some things about Natalie that we don't see on screen that people like should know about her like things that you know just like as being her 
Oh, okay. So something that I know that I don't think is, well, it's not in the series. I think it mentions it briefly in the book. The reason Natalie, um, you know, wants to go into modeling in the first place is because one of her mother's friends told her that she could be a model. And because her parents are divorced, um, to me, what I took away from the character, and I guess I kind of made this up, but then it makes it true about Natalie, um, is that she struggled a lot with her parents splitting up and she didn't necessarily know who she was but all of her life she has been told you're really pretty you're really beautiful and she thought okay this is the only thing I can make of myself um and so that's what her passion was and her drive was to you know become to become a model I mean that's kind of what I took from it anyway so um what's another thing that people know or don't know about Natalie she is I mean you'll all find out that she's a very loyal friend she's a very nice friend um but she likes she likes to eat pancakes you see her i think you see her eat pancakes but oh no wait no she doesn't like to eat pancakes hold on wait i just lied to you um in a scene because i was remembering this wrong i'm so sorry um in a scene she was made to eat blueberry pancakes and um i don't like blueberry pancakes so i was trying my best to eat them with conviction like i really liked them i'm like mm. but i feel like you might be able i haven't seen it but i feel like you might be able to tell on my face that i really don't like the blueberry pancakes because i'm like eating the tiniest amount and i'm like mm, this is nice oh, so yeah she oh. like blueberry pancakes. that's so funny giving us the little inside scoop that's crazy do you not like the blueberries in the pancakes or like the pancake part the blueberries and the pancake like I like blueberries and I like pancakes I just feel like sometimes the two don't go together and that's okay especially if the blueberries are cooked with the pancake because then I'm like do you cook blueberries is that is that a thing I don't yeah. know maybe cake jam but I don't know not a fan yeah no I get that my um one of my really good friends does not like blueberries when they're cooked either like in muffins or anything like that so I'm tracking it's okay you don't have to like it but that's so funny um so we'll have to we'll have to be on the lookout just in case we can see it I'm sure you did a great job thank you <laughs> yeah for sure okay so what did you and Emily who plays Harriet do outside of filming to like build a like friendship? I know you kind of already talked about the cast being kind of close and making TikToks and stuff, but was there anything that you guys did to like kind of build that on-screen friendship? Yeah, so I mean, I personally think that me and Em clicked so well that they're, they're such a beautiful person all in all. Um, we did meet up before um, I did a costume fitting and that was beautiful. Um, we've had sleepovers, uh, we, you know, gossip quite a lot um just about our like our own lives and just catching each other up you know they live in London and I don't at the moment so it's pretty difficult long distance wise but you know while we were filming we went to go see the Barbie movie together and we had matching outfits which was lovely um I went and bought us some matching pink shirts and shoes and things like that um and yeah I would we would just sit and we would watch movies and just sit in each other's company and I think that was what was really special about M is that you feel very safe around them and you feel like you can sit there in silence with them or you can sit and talk their ear off for a million years and they will still sit there with the same intentiveness and I think that's so special and it's very rare to find in a friend so you know I'm really happy that I got to work alongside them and not only had their wisdom and everything that they had to teach me but also just their friendship and their company they're honestly just a one in a million person yeah absolutely oh that's so sweet I love it's always nice to have a friend like that any place that you can so I think that that's really good that you got that mm -hmm. um what's like one thing that you learn from your fellow cast members that you're going to take with you as part of like your career path Emmanuel uh, Manny who plays Wilbur um, taught me a lot to do with um, just owning who you are as a person and wearing that on your sleeve and you know living out your color um, and just just feeling how you feel and not letting anybody else define that and I think you know it's it's all the stuff that I guess you get told and you know already but you don't necessarily live it until somebody makes that impact on you and someone tells you and it actually resonates with you like I'd always been told be yourself before and you know you kind of just brush it off and you go yeah okay but then something about Manny when 
he would come up to me and just really embrace the fact that he was himself and, you know, tell me about his own journey. And then he helped me to own my journey. And it was, it's just so beautiful talking to him as a person. And it really made me, just made me come into my own in a way, you know, I wasn't during filming, as I, you know, previously said, I was going through a little bit of a rough time, you know, it was difficult, it happens to the best of us. Um, but coming out of filming, I definitely felt like a new and improved version of myself and not even new and improved, just a different and just a, a more kinder, more happy in my own skin. And just, just, I just really liked who I were, uh, who I was, sorry, um, when I came out of that process. Um, because of Manny and because of all of the cast members, essentially, they were just so great to me. Like I could talk about them forever. They were just so, so lovely. And yeah, I just can't thank them enough. I'm very grateful if any of them are listening to this. Love you all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope they are. I hope they are listening to this because <laughs> that's so sweet. And I love um, a little encouragement for them. But that's great. That's great. Um, was there anything funny that happened to you guys off camera that you guys can that you can share about? I mean, the bloopers from Manny again, so very funny. His character is just so comical. Um, I'm trying to think of something that happened off camera. Ooh, when there's a cute little scene where I don't know how much I can talk about it, um, but I'm holding these massive, big, fat placards that are, like, double the size of my body, and I have to, like, move them, and they just kept falling, um, and it was really, obviously, we were on a time crunch, everybody was really stressed, but it was just, it was just, it was funny, it was a nice little funny moment. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other little funny bits. Um... Oh, it's just me, loads of stuff with me and Em. I mean, we were filming in a tunnel in London. Don't know what it's called because I'm not from there. Um, but we were filming in this tunnel and we would play, we would play little games like lyric song games. And it was just funny. I can't even remember what they were. I'm pretty sure they'll be able to remember because my memory is trash. But um, yeah, no, it's just, it's just little wholesome, funny memories that like we have together that are just... Just so cute. Just so lovely. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And I love it. And I know I put you on the spot with that, but that, those are really I'm sweet. Really. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty. I'm sure there's plenty. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Um, I love it. Okay. So we have a couple more questions. What was one first for you in this like role that you had never experienced before? Gosh, a first. Having people... Um, ask me if I wanted coffee or tea. That was very, very, like it was, it's a fantastic experience, but I, I guess it felt weird for me having someone ask me if I wanted anything and then they would just go and do it. And it, at the very beginning, it made me feel very uncomfortable just because I guess I didn't understand it. I was like, I guess if I wanted a drink, I would go and get myself a drink kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, as the time process kind of went on, I learned, well, that, you know, that that is their job and they're very important, you know, in, in what they like need to do and they have their job description. And I would be not very nice if I was like, no, don't do anything. Like I'll, I'll do it myself kind of thing. Like that's kind of what they're there for. And it, obviously it's, it's all a massive team effort. Um, I just, I guess I was just very alienated to the feeling of like somebody wanting to do something for me I was like that's crazy no I can do it myself um but yeah getting getting used to the fact that um there's a certain order for like how things work um yeah which is still something I'm trying to wrap my head around if I'm being honest but yeah that's definitely a first absolutely that would be a first for me too what is your pick are you coffee or tea girl tea a hundred percent I will, I'm really like weird when it comes to coffee or tea, because if it's a coffee, it has to be either like a frappuccino or something like fancy like that, or it has to be like an iced caramel, like mm -hmm. latte kind of situation. I don't like coffee hot. And if I do have it hot, I'll only, like if I have a sore throat, my mum will make me like a black coffee with zero sugar in it, force me to drink it. It's horrendous, but it does the job. Um, but if I do have a hot coffee, it needs to be with like half a pound of sugar. Um, like I need lots and lots of sugar with it but a tea is just simple you put the tea bag in you put the hot water in and then I don't know how you guys make it over there um, but English tea is pretty simple um, and then you know your sugar I do have four teaspoons of sugar though which some people think is too much but you know at least you don't have to drink it yeah. all I like, so yeah 
what like is like the type of tea that's like your go-to oh you know I have hold on I think I've got Tetley tea it's okay. Tetley yeah I think I'm kind of in, I'm partial to all of the teas you know I don't mind a PG tips or I don't know if any of these brands mean anything to you but I um, <laughs> I'm partial to any tea as long as it, you know, comes in a bag. Sometimes it doesn't even have to come in a bag because you get the fancy ones that you just put mm. in there. <laughs> yeah, I That's, love tea. I I have recently do, like taken a deep dive into tea. I didn't always like it, um, but now I kind of do. It's new though to me, so I'm just getting my tea feet wet. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so you said you read the books before you got like were able to like play the role, and um we were wondering if you ever got to speak with the author Holly Smell, um and I was wondering what that was like if you did get to speak with her. Yeah, it was such an unreal experience. I didn't know what she looked like or anything. Um, I just knew that she was this fantastic, talented author um, that had written my favorite books as a child. Um, the first time I met her was at the read through, like the table read. Um, and again, didn't notice her because I didn't know what she looked like. Then I saw her talking to M, and then I clocked. I was like, that's Holly Smale. I didn't go up and speak to her, um, but we all did go for like drinks afterwards. And me and M bumped into her in the toilet, like in the bathroom. And I was fangirling so much. I was like, oh my gosh, like you're the person that wrote this and you may be who I am. Um, and she's just, she's so lovely. I frequently have, you know, chats with her on social media. Um, she's just such a lovely, just a lovely person. You know, I could say this about anyone on Geek Girl. They're all, I don't understand how they've managed to pick so many nice people and put them in a group together. Because I don't, don't know much about set, but I'm assuming, you know, you don't get that often. You don't get so many nice people in a group together, you know, cast and crew. But this has just been one of the most incredible experiences. And Holly has just been just a chef's kiss. She's just so, she's beautiful. She's talented. She's she's kind. She's lovely. And yeah, she absolutely does deserve her flowers for this as well, because it's a beautiful book and it's a beautiful series. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. OK, cool. That's so sweet. I'm so glad that she was like such a lovely person to be around, too, which I feel it sounds like everybody was. So, <laughs> OK, what songs do you think would be on Natalie's current playlist? I think she's a One Direction girly. I think she really resonates with One Direction before they broke up. So I think every single one of the 1D albums she would have on there. I think she would listen to a lot of Pink. Um, oh. This is such a good question. Um, thank you for asking it. Um, I think she would, she'd probably listen to some Lana Del Rey. Mm -hmm. And hmm, what else would she listen to? I think... I think she would really, she would love Sabrina Carpenter. She oh, would love her new, her new song, Espresso. Yeah. She would love that on repeat. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that's like, I'm working late. Right? That's so that, funny. I cannot get it out of my head. That's my favorite part. I'll be like in the kitchen doing things. I'll be like, I'm working late. Like, it's just the way she sings it is so satisfying. <laughs> that's so funny. And so true. And such a good answer. I agree. <laughs> I love Okay, so we have like one quick question and then we have this kind of like a rapid fire um, and then we're pretty much done. So, um, but I'll ask the first one first. And if you, okay, where do you see the storyline going if it's picked up for like a season two? I see so much more fashion. Obviously I've read the second book. So I'd just assuming that it goes with the second book and, you know, Harriet going to, I'm pretty sure it will be Korea or something, you know, a live Tokyo career. Um, and her doing more beautiful modeling uh, like the Queen G is. Um, and I think it would be GCSE season in the school. Um, so, I know it's really difficult for me to answer that question and not go off what is on the like in the books. I think I would hope that Natalie has a love interest. I would love that for her. I would hope that she does because I love a rom-com, love a good rom-com. Um, and I think a lot more friendships, a lot more fallouts, um, just a lot more chaos, but so much more love. I think, you know, I would hope to see her and Nick's relationship blossom and develop because, um, you know, I think that would be very cute to see. 
Um, definitely a lot more glitz and glamour, a lot more modelling. Um, but I'd also love to see a lot more of the school side, you know, to see her, you know, balancing things between like her school life and her modelling life. And, you know, just what she's like as what Harriet's like as a person. I think that would be really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's so exciting. I really hope it does because I think that'd be so fun. And um, I can just tell, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but I am so excited too. And I feel like it's going to be so good. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope you like it. I hope everyone yeah. likes it. It was so fun to film. So yeah. Is there anything any is there any like major takeaway that you hope people like leave with after they watch the um like first season? You know, I really hope as someone who is not neurodivergent, I feel like I can't speak a lot on it, but I really, really do hope that the people who are feel seen and feel heard and represented. Um, in this show, I mean, something that I love about the show, um, creativity wise, is the fact that they don't explicitly mention it and they don't make the entire show about it. So it's not something that's, you know, so at, like surface level face value. Like you see, you see things and, you know, you kind of match things up. And I really do hope people um, who have autism um, really resonate with it I just I hope that they're the people who you know take something out of it and feel like they've had a positive experience and they feel like you know that they they are these beautiful people um you know just as they are and that they don't need to change a single thing to fit this world you know that has so many rules and regulations let's just say so I, I just hope that that's something that gets taken away from this show because I think it's really beautifully done yeah Absolutely. Very well put. Very well spoken. I love. <laughs> okay. So really quickly, we'll do like a rapid fire round. These are like all about like your first like experiences in that, like with acting. Um, so there's like five or six of them and I'll just go through them really fast. <laughs> okay. Ready, set. What was your first acting role? It was Donkey in Shrek the Musical when I was 12 years old. Love. Oh my goodness. Okay. First audition for the British Ballet Organization when I was 11 years old. Amazing. First like dream role. <gasps> Princess Jasmine in Aladdin. Yes. Good one. First like movie or TV show that inspired you to become an actor. Aladdin. Okay. Good, good, good. That makes sense. First like day on your first set. Uh, that was the first day on Geek Girl. <gasps> Amazing. Oh my goodness. Okay. First do you have a first on-screen kiss? No. That's okay. There's time for that later, maybe. Um, and then the first time you ever had to cry on cue. Oh, that was also Geek Girl. Um, it was about two weeks in to filming. Wow, amazing. So good. Okay, I am so, so, so thankful that you have hung out with us today. Thank you so much, guys. And don't forget to subscribe to your entertainment.